In this video, I'm going to show you how to save a Java object with Hibernate. So again, just a checkpoint on our development process or our to-do list, we've already covered step one of the Hibernate config file. We took care of annotating our Java class. Now at this point, step three, we're actually going to develop Java code to perform database operations. And you're probably wondering, hey, where's the real Hibernate code? Well, we'll actually get into it in this video and also in the following video. So a lot of good stuff here. But first, I want to talk about two key players that we need to be aware of from Hibernate. The first one here is called Session Factory. This is a person that reads the Hibernate config file, gets a connection to a database. Um, it'll create the session objects for us. And this session factory is what we call a heavyweight object. Um, you only create it once in your application and then you simply reuse that same session factory over and over again. Now, once you have the session factory created, well, that session factory, it will uh, create sessions. Okay. The whole idea of factory, right? Creating objects, it creates sessions. So that's our next player here, a session. So the session is really just a wrapper around a JDBC connection to the database. The session is the main object that you're going to use for saving and retrieving objects to the database. Now this session object is really just a short lived object. So for a given method, uh, you'll get a session, you'll use it and then you'll throw it away. And then you go back and get another session, use it and then throw away. Um, so the session is actually retrieved from the session factory. So that previous guy session factory, they create them, you use them here and make use of it. Um, I'll actually show you some coding here on how these two work together, but I at least wanted to give you a definition up front just so you know what they're about. All right, now let's see these guys in action. So uh, the first couple of lines here is that we actually get a reference to a session factory. So here I have factory equals new configuration dot configure and I tell it the name of the hibernate configuration file that we're using. And then I say dot add annotated class. So I give a reference to the actual Java class that has the special annotations on it. And then you say dot build session factory. So that'll give you a session factory object that you can use later on in your application. Now, again, remember the session factory is a heavyweight object. You really only create it once and then you reuse it X number of times throughout your application. Okay. So we have the session factory created. Then I can use this factory to get a handle to a given session. So I say factory dot get current session. It'll give me a session object and then I can use it to perform a database operation. So the normal pattern, you'll have like a try catch block or a try finally block. Inside of the try block is where you actually use the session object to either save Java objects or retrieve Java objects. And I'll show you an example of saving one uh, in the next slide. But this is kind of like the big picture on how it lays out. Now, one thing that I want to point out here, um, when we create the session factory and we say dot configure and I give the actual name of the Hibernate configuration file, um, that's actually not required. You can simply say dot configure open paren, close paren without a config file name. Um, by default, Hibernate will look for a file on your class path called hibernate.cfg.xml. However, I like to be explicit during training just to show you, hey, Hibernate's gonna look for a given file. However, the file name's not required as long as you use the default file name. But anyway, just want to give you the background on that. Okay, now moving ahead to the next slide here, uh, this is how we actually save a Java object. All right, so in our try catch block here. So the first thing I do is I create the student. So saying new student, give first name, last name, email address. Again, this is plain old Java here, nothing hibernate specific. I simply create an object. Then I, uh, then I actually start a transaction. So here I say session.begin transaction. Then I save the student. So here I'll say session.save and I give temp student. So here I'm going to save a given object to the database. Now behind the scenes, right? Hibernate knows how to connect to our database based on our configuration file. Hibernate also knows 
how to map this student uh, class or object to the actual database based on those annotations we took care of in the previous video. So Hibernate knows kind of where things should fall. So here I say session.save puts it in the database and then I also do a commit on this transaction. So here I say session.getTransaction.commit and that actually stores it in the database once I do a commit. There's also a rollback uh, method if you'd like to do that if you're not happy with uh, this transaction. So that's the basic game plan. That's the basic happy path of how you actually save a Java object in the database. Now hold on and stay tuned. Um, in the next video we'll actually um, start up Eclipse and we'll actually write the code for this and then we'll actually run the code and we'll verify that it actually makes it to our database. But I at least wanted to give you some theory first before we actually moved into the real hands-on practical aspect of it. All right. Well, I'm all fired up over here. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm ready to write some code. So I will see you in the next video.